welcome to this virtual worship in the Church of the Nativity in San Rafael. Our bulletin and our readings are available on our website at nativityonthehill.org. Bless the Lord, who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to, to you all the hearts are open, all desires known, and, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water. And the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and the water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thanksgiving. And, and raise a loud shout to him with songs. 
For the Lord is a great God. And a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth. And the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it. And his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. And kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, oh that today, today you would hearken to his voice. Harden not your hearts as your forebears did in the wilderness. At Arabah and on that day at Masa, when they tempted me. They put me to the test. Though they had seen my works. Forty years long I detested that generation and said, This people are wayward in their hearts. They do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath. They, they shall, shall not, not enter into, into my rest. <coughs> A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace through God our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, we will be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jesus, Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. 
but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on the mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman but no one said, what do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say, Four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you, you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and reaper may rejoice together. For the saying here holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe. For we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. <coughs> Today we hear again the story of the Samaritan woman at the well. It's a cherished passage from scripture. Our lectionary juxtaposes the story of the Samaritan woman with Paul's letter to the Romans. And as I began to think about these passages this week, what I heard was how Jesus overcomes difference and is the great reconciler. It seems what's most important about these passages when we take them together is how we know the nature of God 
in relationships. The Samaritan woman can be taken symbolically as the one who is distant from the community of God. Historical divisions between the Samaritans and the Jews were fierce. And at the time of John's writing, those divisions were both political and religious. You might think about the divisions in Northern Ireland between the Protestants and the Catholics, or the divisions between the Serbian Orthodox and the Croatian Catholics in what is now the former Yugoslavia. But Jesus, in spite of those differences, in spite of those divisions, begins the conversation with the Samaritan woman. And he begins it by asking her for what? He's broken through the social division which would keep a man from starting a conversation with a woman alone, and he's broken through the division that would keep a faithful Jew from speaking and reaching out to a person from Samaria. He initiates that conversation. The conversation in this passage happens at the well, and the well is a symbol, a symbol of the water of life. It evokes, for the people of John's time, the images of a betrothal, a betrothal that would happen at the well. In the Bible story um, that we heard from Exodus, Moses crushing the stone, bringing forth the water of life, those images are also brought to mind when we see Jesus and the woman at the well. Water is, of course, necessary for life itself, but we speak about spiritual sustenance, a soul thirsting for God, a sense of us as longing for God's living water. We long for that closeness with God. We remember Moses and the people who were quarreling with God. Why did you bring us out of Egypt only to find ourselves with no water. And at that moment, God provides. And so here, in this story, we have those images from the historical stories and our own thirsting brought to mind. So taken together, the symbols of the Samaritan woman as the other, and the well as the source of living water, the meaning of the story emerges. Jesus is the reconciler. He breaks through the social barriers to unite people, and he brings God's living water to all people. In the dialogue that Jesus initiates with the Samaritan woman, we might see God reaching out to us. In her response, maybe we hear our skepticism. The Samaritan woman hears Jesus asking for water and she says, Sir, you have no water, no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us the well and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Really? In this moment, you who have no bucket are going to Give me what I need most. Maybe that's where we are when we find ourselves distant, not able to even worship together. How far away is God? We wonder, we question. But Jesus keeps the conversation going. He challenges her about her husband and shows that he knows the truth. In the back and forth between Jesus and the woman, we might imagine ourselves, God reaching out to us. And when we respond with some skepticism, God's assurance that our faith is strong enough. We are loved and supported by the living water in Christ Jesus. Today, this dialogue with Jesus feels like maybe the most important conversation we can be having as a disparate congregation 
not gathered here in our sanctuary, but gathered online, listening to this sermon, maybe some point later in the week, reading it. It may be hard for us to feel God reaching out. It's the first time since the flu epidemic in 1918 that the Episcopal churches in the Diocese of California have closed. Stopping public worship may seem actually contrary to our faith. We know God in the public, physical sharing of praise and supplication. We know God in the sharing of the sacrament, bread and wine that affirm God's grace to us and bring us together into one body. So how is it that we can experience God in relationship when we can't be together? As we listen to the news this week about COVID-19, the coronavirus, we're learning that the virus is spread by contact and we're required to keep social distance find that term very upsetting, social distance. Jesus broke through the social distance, reaching out to the Samaritan woman. And we're asked, we're challenged, to break through that social distance without touching one another. For some of us at Nativity, our weekly worship is the center of our connections. We have members for whom this is the first Sunday they've missed, the first Sunday which they haven't gathered with us. They come every single Sunday. And then we have members who come when they can, who come when this fits in the busy lives of people of Marin, you know, they have kids' activities and we see them, they're incredibly faithful, but we see them every third or fourth Sunday. But now, those other places where they connect, school and work and kids' activities, those have also stopped. And maybe today, while they can't usually worship with us, today this is a necessary conversation with God. And then there are some of our members, and we see rarely, they're homebound and they don't come on Sundays or they're faithful, but come on Easter and Christmas. And there are members, faithful people of God, who are also, at this moment, longing for connection. And so, hearing scripture today, I hear that we're invited to pray about how we might break through the health requirements that are keeping us separate. As a disciple of Christ Jesus, I invite you to reimagine how you can touch one another, cross the social divisions, and create reconciling community. This might be a time to leave a package on your neighbor's doorstep, to send an email to someone you don't know well, but who might appreciate an email conversation. This might be an opportunity to appreciate having children at home as you find ways to work remotely, engage your children or your teens in your work life. If you or people close to you work in the service sector, you may not have work like or much less work in the next few weeks. This will be a hardship and we will have to offer one another real support, financial support and practical aid as we move through this period. As we pray today into Jesus' promise of living water, I'm struck by my new fixation on washing hands, on soap and water. Washing hands constantly as both a sign and a practice of loving one another, keeping one another safe, ensuring that we live in community. As we wash our hands, we might remember Jesus' words, everyone who drinks of this water 
will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become them in them a spring of water gushing up of eternal life. The eternal life that Jesus promises is not a life after death. It's a rich and full life here and now. As we build up our faith, turning towards God, like the Samaritan woman, we will know that we are God's people. We are beloved, valued, cherished. For he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. The trials of this time will not keep us from God. Through prayer and care for one another, we will know this hope that Christ Jesus brings to every living thing. Like he stayed with the Samaritans, he will stay with us in our places of work and rest, in our times of hardship and joy. Our God of all creation is working to reconcile us to him and to bring us into loving relationships with one another. Thanksgiving, we pray responding to God of love with hear our prayer. We pray for one another, for our families and friends, through whom we learn to love and be loved. We remember Colton James, Ellen Sigmund, Catherine Christian, Ed Bates, Daniel Rose, Marco Hoy, Nancy Schulte, John Yankovic, Ruth Halova, Richard Thiel, Thomas Klinger, Marge Pappas, Mary O'Dell, Mary Peel, Jim Gray, Hal and Jill Brage. Thank you for all who care for us. Give us grace to serve Christ by serving our neighbors and our community, loving others as he loves us. God of love, hear our prayer. prayer. We thank you for the unfailing love you hold out to everyone in Jesus Christ. Comfort and heal those in sorrow, need, sickness, or any other trouble. 
We pray especially for all who are ill with the coronavirus and those who suffering the disappointments, economic hardships, and isolation caused by the pandemic. Remember our parish members for special grace and healing, Ruth, Carissa, Margie, Juliet, Mary, Myrna, Phil, Dan, Sybil, Elizabeth, Donna, and Jim Goss. Give them courage and hope in their distress and bless those who minister to them. God of love, hear our prayer. We remember with gratitude your many gifts to us in creation. Help us and people everywhere to share with justice and peace the resources of the earth. Give wisdom to those who, in authority among us, remembering especially our President Donald and our Governor Gavin, and to all leaders of the nations, God of love. Hear, Hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for your church throughout the world, thanking you for all who serve Christ and his kingdom. We remember especially the bishops and clergy, of the Episcopal Church. We give thanks for church leaders everywhere who are reimagining worship and community life as we observe social distancing. By your spirit, strengthen your people for their work and witness in the world. Unite us in your truth and love that we who confess your name may also reflect your glory. God of love, hear our prayer. We remember with thanksgiving all who have died in Christ, and we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we may enter with them into the unending joy of your heavenly kingdom. God of love, hear our prayer. Merciful God, you look with compassion on all who turn to you. Hear the prayers of your people. Those things, good Lord, that your servants have praised for, give us grace to work for, and in the purpose of your love, answer our prayers and fulfill our hopes, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. It is a strange thing to worship online. <laughs> I'm so glad you're with us <laughs> in this virtual way. Um, let me encourage you, um, now is the time, as I said in my sermon, to reach out to one another. So please um, feel free to call the office. Um, we will be picking up messages regularly and I'll be responding to them. Um, our other clergy are also avail available for prayers on the phone and for conversation. Um, a number of our members have suggested that we might gather in um, email chains, and that would be wonderful if you would like to be part of an email chain, just checking in with one another. Um, just leave your, your name and we'll make sure that you're added to a conversation that way. Um, and you will have, if you're a regular member attending here at Nativity, you will have been part of a phone tree. So the vestry members are reaching out to members of the congregation to just stay in touch. Um, it seems like that's the most important thing that we can do right now. Um, 
there will be uh, no gatherings of worship um, in the church. At this point, we are going to cancel um, contemplative prayer. We'll put on the church calendar a call-in line um, so that if you'd like to participate by phone, that will be available on Wednesday night. Um, and then um, one service announcement. In the Marine Food Bank is very short of volunteers and running very low on food. So if you are in the neighborhood and you are um, able to get groceries and you could drop some groceries here, we'll make sure that they get to the food bank. Um, that ministry that has been so important to us is needed more than ever as people face real hardship um, in this time. I think that's it for now. If you are offering your gift at the altar, and there, remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother. And then, come and offer your gift.
given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We are going to pray as our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. thanksgiving let us pray god of abundance you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation you have united us with christ and one another and you have made us one with all of your people in heaven and on earth 
Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May the blessing of the God of Abraham and Sarah, and of Jesus Christ, born of our sister Mary, and of the Holy Spirit, who broods over the world as a mother over her children, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.